So I think that we need to do a take two on the whole random shell casing sets off live ammunition on the benchtop video because, well, to be honest, some of y'all freaked out about that video and I think you're taking it a little bit more seriously than I intended. So in the interest of calming the internet down, we're going to do a little bit deeper dive into it. So the thing that stuck out most to me from you guys was there were multiple people that were like, how is it that we trust inline magazine firearms? And for anybody who's not tracking, instead of a box magazine that has the cartridges laid one on top of each other like this, an inline magazine has a tube where the cartridges are loaded one after another. And, you know, obviously recoil occurs. And then, you know, you get the bound chicka wow wow with the projectile to primer interaction. Uh, examples of firearms like that would be any of these things on the wall over here. So the reason that that is not an issue is because we designed the bullets. This would be a good example. This is a really heavy 4570 projectile. And this is a prime case. So there's no uh, propellant. There is no projectile on this, just the case and the, the primer. So just for the heck of it, for safety, I can take this and that there's no chance of that going off. I can take it to the next level and take a hammer and I'm to the point where I'm bending this case and this is not going off. So what I believe occurred from watching the video an unnatural amount of times <laughs> is that the casing did not come in and land like this. Rather, it landed at some angle that allowed the geometry of the case to depress that primer. Now, you might be saying, well, it's just a, a primer or it's just a casing that was falling for, after being ejected. And how does it have enough energy to do that? Well, first of all, it's an ejected case. So it's not just falling with the speed of gravity. It's been ejected and it's bounced off of the wall. So there's some some uh, elastic uh, rebound going on there. Hey, can I call you back in a few minutes? I'm filming. Hey, you're beautiful. Remember that if you would like to help Curtis pay for his dates, then we have an affiliates page that you can leverage to get great deals on products that I stand behind, like PowerTech flashlights and the like. That link is listed in the description box down below for you to take advantage of at your discretion. Thank you very much. There were two other things that really kind of like stuck their head out to me. And uh, the first one was the number of people that said, oh, this is a fake video. This is just some kid trying to gain internet fame, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from the amount of video that I've worked with in my career, and as close as I've looked at this thing, I don't believe this to be a fake video. I think that this actually did happen. And again, if you watch the original video, we have a second documented case. I don't believe that that one was faked either. Just because if you were going to fake it, you'd film it better. <laughs> and the last thing I really wanted to touch on was there were a lot of people throwing it at the feet of the ammunition manufacturer. Now, I don't have any affiliation with that manufacturer, but I don't believe that this is their fault. A lot of people were saying, oh, they're using soft primers or they're doing an inferior product to get it out the door. There was a lot of anti-capitalist stuff going on. And uh, it just makes me really uncomfortable. I understand how uh, supposedly freedom-loving Americans can be so... Uh, anti-capitalism in this day and age. It really just don't get it. But regardless, I thought, hey, we should look at what does it take to actually initiate a primer? In order to do this, I stripped down my Glock 19 to the slide and barrel. And yes, I am making a rather large assumption here that this is nine millimeter. So if all my calculations are off because this was 10 millimeter, then I'm sorry, but I'm gonna go with nine. To do this, we have to go back to physics class where we talk about springs and I know that many of you have forgotten how the spring equations work and all that sort of stuff so I won't let the maths touch you in the bad place. What I did was basically set the striker at different distances after taking a variety of measurements to see if it would set off the primer. In order to do this safely I prepared a series of nine millimeter primed brass as in just the casing 
and the primer, no propellant or projectiles, so that we could do this in a controlled environment. Test one, 75%. 50%. 50%. Give her another shot here. Nothing. That new mark is 35%. Nothing. The factory Glock 19 striker spring weighs in at five and a half pounds. And I went ahead and confirmed that for this test that, yeah, it's pretty much spot on five and a half pounds. And from the series of tests that you saw, needed it to be about 50% of its travel displacement in the striker channel to reliably set off a primer. So what I have here <laughs> is an entire sheet of mathematics for those of you who would like to check my work. Uh, for those of you who don't want the maths in your face, what we have is approximately six meters per second or 19.7 feet per second of velocity on that striker at half displacement position. And that's what we're gonna be using for our, what we're gonna say is good to set off a primer. Obviously full cock is gonna be moving on to the actual video in question. And I'm gonna guesstimate that this gentleman is average male height type thing. And if I do that, then that puts the top of the screen approximately eight feet in the air, and that's where the brass comes from. I'm also guesstimating that that bench top is about four feet off the ground, so that gives us a nice round number of four feet of travel. Let's see what I did there. I counted nine frames from the top of the screen where the brass appears to when it contacts the uh, primer and sets it off. And if we do the jiggery poofery mathematics, then we get approximately 13.3 uh, feet per second, which is um, not 19 point anything feet per second. So we're a little bit slow. However, we forgot one thing, and that is that the projectile, or not the projectile, the casing is not just falling like this. It is indeed spinning like this through the air. And if I count the revolutions, I'm saying, from looking at the video, your opinion may vary, but I'm saying it's about a half revolution per frame. So that gets us out to, if we take the measurement of a nine millimeter casing, most uh, casings are going to rotate around their heaviest point, which is usually the head stamp of the case. We can come out with approximately six feet per second of rotation. So the ideal strike would be if that casing was falling and rotating and then landed tangentially in a way that the mouth of the case strikes that primer. In that situation, and in that situation alone, those velocities that we calculated are additive. And that would put us at a relative velocity of 19.3 feet per second, which is pretty darn close to what we calculated for the half displacement striker. The other thing that I would like to point out in the firing pin in the very front, it's kind of a uh, wedge shape, but it's also relatively flat if you look at it. It's not a circle or anything by that, by any stretch of the imagination. If you look at a tangential point on the case rim, then you could get down to a single point, theoretically, which would mean that you've now distributed the energy that we generated off of that flying case, even though the case weighs roughly a third of what the striker and the Glock weighs, you're distributing it over a much smaller surface area. And I believe that that is the mechanism that allows this phenomenon, although it is rare, I believe that's what allows this to occur. So if you learned something in today's video and you enjoyed this discussion, then please let me know in the comment section down below. If you think that I missed something, then I would love to hear from you, as well as anybody who checked my math and found me to be completely incapable of doing algebra type stuff. I am in preparation for uh, SHOT Show next week, so it, my mind's kind of swimming all over the place. 
Thank you guys for watching, and special thanks to all you who support the channel directly on Patreon, Subscribestar, and those of you who use those discount codes over at the affiliates page.